many of my friends in the competitive community know my story, but for those of you that don't, I ride an 800cc motorcycle, which is too small to enter into most competitions. So until I find myself on a road king, I volunteer my time to promoting and sharing with the world what my friends do on the competitive courses. I have a huge passion for this sport and I truly believe that this training makes a difference in rider safety on the street. Many others that ride on two wheels will argue against this point, but this isn't their channel, it's mine. And this is the video of my first competition. One of the coolest things about this competition was the extra daily challenges. There was no practice for these events and you had to run them 100% clean. They didn't count towards your overall standing in the comp, but were a fun set of extra activities and a chance to win some extra hardware. This first challenge, I believe only five people were able to complete it and I was not one of them. After everyone got their shot at the daily challenge, they opened it up as one of the expert precision patterns. I did hit a cone or two, but this is what the full pattern looked like. If you are curious about the dimensions, this is a 30 foot box with the corner cones 5 feet off the walls, and the creator of this pattern is one of my mentors and a great rider, David Fairley, lead instructor for the Lock and Lean 101 class in New Jersey. Originally, the open class, which consisted of only me and Jake Stinson, were set to compete on the expert courses which only halfway through day one were proving to be extremely challenging. This was probably the hardest pattern that I actually would have been able to complete, but it more than likely wasn't going to be pretty. And there was actually only one pattern that I was fairly confident was going to end in a DNF. As you can see here, I'm knocking down and hitting cones left and right. It took everything I had just to hold it together long enough to scrape my way through this pattern. I am fairly confident with one more day's practice, I would have had all the patterns clean except for one. But we were approached by Ben, and it was stated that we might get a little more from the event if we moved to the novice courses. Which killed me a little on the inside, but in hindsight, it was the right thing to do. thing that really separated this competition and training event apart from some other ones was the daily skills seminars which included a no break seminar, a precision strategy seminar, a threshold breaking seminar, and in this clip here a slow ride strategy seminar. Let's just say there was no shortage of learning and information at this event. After Ben was done with the seminar, they opened up the slow ride course for practice. Sadly enough, this is my least favorite and also my most under-practiced event, which is stupid on my part because all the best riders usually have a great slow ride, and often it is used as a tiebreaker in the case that two riders have the same score. After lunch, Jake and I took Ben's advice and went over to the novice side to learn and practice the courses. Let's just say they were definitely much easier than the expert side. And after a few hours of practice and hanging out with some old as well as some new friends, we wrapped up day one and headed back to the hotel to rest and recover before doing it all again in the morning. Day two started out with the challenge event. This was the first event that counted towards our overall score for the competition. There is no practice for this event. You get a walkthrough on how the course is to be ridden and then five to 10 minutes to memorize it before you have to line up and run it. Here you can see the pucks on the ground we had to split with our front and rear tires. I actually hit one of the pucks and knocked down a cone in the grass portion of the course. Other than those two penalties, the rest of the course I ran clean. Here's where they tried to get into our heads, with a speed bump followed by a half grass, half blacktop cone corridor, 
and then add the rain on top of that, and I'm sure it messed with a few people, but it really wasn't that bad at all. At the end of my run here, you will see me stop with my front tire in the stop box and my left foot down only. Failing to stop left foot down only in any of the sport events was a DNF. They are very serious about that because it's very important for being in control of your motor 100% of the time. After we got the challenge course out of the way, it was time to have a little fun before the next event. Being that the novice courses really weren't much of a challenge for me, I decided to just hang out and get to know the other riders while we practiced the speed course and the slow ride before getting scored on them later that day. After a little while, the sun came out and it dried up quite nicely. It was also at this point that I realized Jake was a little bit faster than I was. So if I was going to beat him, I was going to have to be 100% clean, which is always the number one goal of mine anyways, because it's better to be clean and precise rather than fast with penalties. The next challenge for the day was the slow ride. At registration, we were able to buy two additional attempts, which I think most people took advantage of. To be 100% honest, this by far is my least favorite and weakest event. It also is another area where Jake was better than I was. I don't know the official times, but I think he beat me pretty easily. This was the last event of day two that went towards our final score. It was also the first of our two speed runs. I made sure to be the first one in line the same as I did with the challenge event. I think it says a lot about someone who isn't afraid to be the first so I make a habit of it whenever I can. I knew that I had one more chance tomorrow on the speed course so I played it safe and made sure to score a clean run with a respectable time. I was also hoping that this would put a little pressure on Jake and cause him to make a mistake. But he's like me, we just go out to have fun and don't really get too nervous about it. Here was the toughest part of the course. Ken Grant likes to make some tight corridors and this particular one had a deep bump that kind of set you up weird going into it. This is where a lot of people took out cones and received penalty points. Thank you. This was the daily challenge for day two. It's an exercise called the Gates of Hell, and not many people made it through this one, myself included. I think in total, less than six out of the 60 competitors were able to complete this clean. started out with the precision runs. In total, there were three novice precision patterns. This one was the most difficult and also the longest one, though it wasn't too bad. It consisted of two left-hand turns followed by a 20-foot U-turn, and then you had to run the pattern in the opposite direction to the right, also making sure to stop with your engine guards in line with the exit gate while only putting down your left foot. Fifteen. On your breath. 
right, thank you, Scott. The shizen patterns are not timed, and the only objective is to run them cleanly, as you are assessed penalty points for touching cones, knocking them over, or putting your feet down. If you happen to run out of pattern, drop your motor, or fail to stop with only your left foot down, it was a DNF, which is short for did not finish. This was the third and final novice precision pattern, and probably the easiest one of the three. Both Jake and I ran clean on all the precision courses, and with me taking the win in the challenge event, and him taking the win in the slow ride, it was really anyone's game at this point. This was the second of Jake's speed runs. It was also the run that sealed his victory. Jake blasted off from the start box like a man on a mission, I think his time ended up being about a minute and 15 seconds, and though I tried to leave it all on the course when my second run came up, he still had me beat by about 2 seconds. All in all, I couldn't have lost to a better guy and I'm hoping he will decide to join me in the Open Class at Gettysburg in October, so that we can have a round 2. The big takeaway is, these competitions really aren't about winning. They're about challenging yourself and learning what you can from the more experienced riders as well as the organizers running the event. Whenever someone was struggling, there was always someone there willing to step in and help them out. Finding my way into this community was the best thing that happened on my two-wheel journey. Being able to be a part of these events has changed my life forever. And as long as I'm able to ride, I will do everything in my power to attend, document, and share these great training opportunities with the world because I truly believe that regular training and consistent practice make for a much safer rider on the streets. On you, brother. Before I end this video, here's one last clip and probably my proudest moment of the rodeo. This was the third challenge event and the last chance to win a challenge medal. It was definitely the easiest challenge of the competition but there were a lot of talented riders that didn't complete this, and I was proud to be part of the few that did. Hopefully this video inspires some people to come out and join us on the competitive circuit. But I have to warn you, once you start the journey, there is no going back. Move your helmet, sir!